Hey guys, welcome back. This is Sharpen Up episode two, and this is all about what apps we use when we're out on the water or planning a voyage, etc. on our smartphone. So let's dive into what apps we use when we're out on the yacht. So what apps do we use when we're out on the boat? Now I'm generally, as everyone knows, running Apple. So I use an Apple iPhone. I have the iPhone 10 or the iPhone X, which I find really, really good for just doing all this navigation stuff on here. Now on my phone, and I'll show you all of this, on my phone I have a folder that my wife has conveniently named Blowboat Stuff, uh, just in my folders on my apps. So in that folder I have the following. All right, now what I wanna pay most attention to today uh, is weather forecasting apps and navigation apps. I'm gonna briefly run over all of those, uh, some in a little bit more detail than others because I will do a follow-up video on forecasting and then on navigating via your smartphone as an assistive navigating device. But first of all, we're just gonna go through which apps we use. Number one into this folder. Um, number one is weather track. Now, WeatherTrack is a grib file forecasting reader, okay? Now, WeatherTrack has a bunch of different features. Um, I only use the grib file reader. Now, what a grib file is, is a uh, data file that is downloaded from the internet or from the, from the servers that has the latest forecast information and vectors. Now, that has a lot of layers of things that you can have in it, whether that is wind, swell, precipitation, temperature, air pressure, etc. Okay, so we'll show you this now. You can see I've got a bunch of different uh, grip files. This is the history of what I've downloaded and used in the last, I don't know, month or something like that. Um, now this will just keep holding that history for you so you can keep them and use them or refer back to them later to see changes. Now what I do here is I just hit uh, download, hit the cloud button to download a new grip file. I say via map and it's going to, if I want, bring up my location. Here I am in Split uh, or in Karstella. Now I can zoom, basically I'm going to set my screen to the area I want a grip file for. So if we're just looking locally at the moment, this is split where I am right now, and I'm going to hit the cloud button and go download. And you see it just says creating on server, here it is now. Now the great thing about this is it needs a very small amount of data or coverage in order to get this. And you can also download these uh, via single sideband communication. That's an advanced feature of it, but if you were out at sea, you could get these grid files and view them on your phone like that. Anyway, we'll get onto that one another day. So basically, I mostly use the wind situation here. Now you can see on the app, it brings me up this view on the phone. If I zoom right out, that's the only part of the grid file that I've gotten. The rest of it I have not downloaded. Had I zoomed out further and downloaded it, cool. So I can zoom on in this and I have every level of detail that I want for this grid file. Now these weather, um, these wind indicating icons here are showing you direction and wind speed. And then the colors are giving you the areas of certain wind speeds because we're in the wind layer. Uh, now we can learn all about reading these in the next video, but effectively what I'm looking at here is in split, we're expecting 15 knots where I am at the moment. And that's about right. If I look out the window out there, we've got about 15 to 18 knots out on the water. Um, and it shows you the direction as well. This shows you that it's coming from the southeast, which is also correct. Now, with that, you need to take into consideration topographical effects, etc., like this. This is giving you the overlay of the grid for the whole area. And if I zoom out, I can scroll through timeline to show, right, this is dropping off, and then it's going to pick up again into that time of night. All right, so that is weather track. This is one of my main weather apps I use, and I find it really helpful so that I can draw my own conclusions based on the grid file and the forecast, and then based on the local conditions or what I can see out the window, out the porthole of the yacht, um, from looking at the clouds and the, the conditions I've got at the time. So that's one of them. 
Moving on to the next app. Um, along with weather, I use this Windy app as well. I know a lot of people like this. It's a very similar system, but it's got a more advanced user interface and it doesn't show you the raw data the same as reading the straight grid file off it like that and it needs a little bit more power to run it. Um, I like Windy on the desktop a lot better than I like it on the mobile app, but it's still very intuitive and it's got some pretty pictures and stuff like that. Um, basically, if we go to location here on this one as well, coach.com, I always find it hard to find myself here. Um, this is doing a similar thing except instead of using the uh, tails and the the weather indicator lines there like we were using, it's got it's got an animation of the wind and how fast it's going. And you can tap in a certain area, I believe. Five knots there. See, I don't know why I can't tap in a specific location. I'm sure previously I've been able to. Ah, I have to move the screen. Okay, so there we go. It's looking at easterly, 10 knots. There we go. And I can click this little down arrow for more information in that area. Now this is nice because it brings up the wind speed and the wind speed and gusts as they interpret it, which is good because um, that takes the guessing game out, out of it for you. And it also gives you the air temperature right there. Very similar information. Um, it just takes a little bit more power to download. Um, so that's Windy. As I say, we'll look into the desktop app of Windy because I really like the interface, the user interface of that. Uh, this one just, I don't know, I, I find the other one more raw and, and easier for me personally to, um, to interpret and to draw my own conclusions from. All right, coming out of that one. Next app. Uh, I've got this local YR, which is just a, um, this is an app I got from a local for here in Croatia. It, it's cool, it's just another one that I can substitute with um, like the Apple Weather app just to get an idea of what everyone's thinking it is for rain and temperature, etc. So that has timetables and graphs and a map where you can select your position as well. Uh, it works. We'll go back out. Along with that, I'll bring up weather. So I also use this along with the grid files. Um, I like to just be able to see, right, what? Do they think it's going to be raining? Do they think it's going to be cold, snowing, or windy, etc.? That's quite good to see what they think is going to happen. Now, one thing that always really annoys me when we're trying to do a day sale or um, something like that, people look at this to see what's the weather going to be like for our sale on Saturday. And it's often very, very misleading. So it's saying, Wednesday today is basically raining. Now, I've had two drops of rain today, and that's it. Basically, it was this morning at 9am, we had some slight spitting on the windscreen, that was it. And quite often, uh, even though it says there's only a 30% chance of rain, and if I look across here, even tomorrow, 1pm, 2pm, 30 and 40% chance of rain. That's not rain, and yet the symbol says Thursday all raining. So it's not necessarily an accurate depiction of it, though I use it to have another look at what's going on. Same with that last one, YR. All right, so everyone knows how to use that. I don't need to explain it. The next one I wanna look at here is MyC. Now, we use this for, MyC is like a moorings, anchorage, booking, or marina and booking app. We use this locally here in Croatia when we're out, um, not that often, but maybe if I'm just looking to go somewhere new and not sure what mooring fields are there or uh, if there's any availability that night. It's kind of just something I use to get contact details. Every now and then I'll use it to book a berth, but not often. I'm usually just calling and developing a contact that way. But this is really, really great in the sense you can zoom in, you can see what restaurants are available, what berthing, what facilities, whether there's power, water at the dock, stuff like that. So if you zoom in here on Karstella, and this is going to say, oh, that's Kastel Lukšić. Let's look down here at the marina. Do, 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 47. So there's 47 somethings here at Marina Kastela. I'm going to click on one of these. And that's first sailing. So this is a yacht charter. Um, marina Kastela, here we go. So Marina Kastela has three and a half out of five stars, or 33 out of 50. It tells you that it's got gas at the pump. Um, which is actually incorrect. <laughs> um, it doesn't have gas at the pump. It has a truck that comes in on certain days so you can fill up, but it does not have 
Anyway, that's interesting. It tells you it's got parking, water, 12 more things, cash machine, ice, sanitary facility, boat lift, electricity, laundry, waste disposal, Wi-Fi. Okay, so this just information is really helpful. Um, and we use that. You can also book places on there. If I go back, I might be able to say safety note, book your birth online, and then you can follow that information there. Um, yeah, really helpful, uh, and especially for some of the free conibers or the free births where you eat at the restaurant and they will um, they will give you a free birth out on the islands. Those are brilliant. So that's what that one's for. Uh, as I say, I use it limited uh, because I have a lot of contacts over here, and if I was going down to Greece or into Italy or somewhere new, I would definitely look in, and use this as well. So that's my C. Uh, you'll see here on the same note, I've got ACI marinas or artsy marinas. This is another one if I really need to book into Artsy and I just want to use the app to find out a price or availability, then I will use this app. Um, and I have yachts information stored in here. So if you have your own yacht or however, um, you could book into something and it would just store your information. Artsy usually charge an extra percentage to book a birth ahead of time. Uh, anyway, that's stuff you can look at when we look at the app later. But that's Artsy Marinas. Also in here is RYA Books. Now RYA Books is just something I have on reference there for giving people some info or even just checking up on certain collision regulations or lights and shapes myself, um, even title diagrams. This stuff, you teach it and you learn it, but everything doesn't stick and it's always good to just back yourself up. You might be on a delivery passage at night and you're seeing a set of lights that you're like, I think I know what that is, but I just want to confirm it. Our way books is good for that so you can download different books in there or different um, uh, ebooks, etc. like that. So that's why I have that one. And last one in this list, well second to last one, we'll get to boating last, is Marine Traffic. Now Marine Traffic, this is a paid app, I purchased this. This is based on the um, AIS signal of a lot of ships and this is going to give you, yes you can send me notifications, and this will tell you all of the boats in your area, what direction and speed they're doing and a little bit of information about them. So for instance, I will be sailing, uh, where are we, there's Greece. I will be taking this route in February. Uh, we are bringing a boat from right, holy crap, look at all the boats. We're bringing a boat from center screen here at Les Obles all the way down through Gibraltar. Now look at all the boats going through here. This is right now, okay? So it's good to be able to see that. Also helps if you're looking out on the horizon and you're like, okay, there's a boat coming. I just need to keep an eye out for this, especially in the shipping lanes. But this is all of the boats that are on AIS. Now, please. This does not mean that if there's no boats in front of you on the app, that there's no boats there. Not every boat has AIS. AIS isn't always working. There can always be something that uh, is not right. There is no substitute for keeping a proper lookout at all times. By all means, at all times. You can also track someone if you, you get their AIS signal and you can go, oh, I'm going to follow you. Um, on that. So that's uh, Marine Traffic, very, very good app to have, worth the $8. Um, last one on here in my list is Navionics Boating. Now, most people know about this app, but I wanted to talk about it briefly. I'm also going to do another video on Navionics Boating and how I use it, so a bit more detail, uh, the features I use, etc. Uh, same with Weather Track. We're going to do those two videos because um, they've been requested by a few of our Patreon, a few of our patrons, so I want to put those videos out soon. Anyway, um, Navionics, <laughs> I've currently not been paying my subscription to Navionics. The boats we've been using in the last season have had excellent brand new GPS systems and um, plotters, and I haven't needed it. And the free version of this means I can still track my position and my speed. I can do basic courses. I will be paying for this uh, coming up in the next month, and I'll also have to buy not only the Mediterranean Black Sea, which covers about this area, but I'll also need to buy uh, Western Europe and something else anyway. But basically, I think Mediterranean Black Sea cost me about $42 a year, and the other, I look quite expensive, I think it might have been about $72. I'll have to double check that, but I'll note those when I upgrade them and do the other video. So, that's Navionics, and as you can see, it's got my course and my heading. Now, not everything's that accurate. I am not doing 3.5 knots right now. Um, <laughs> But that's got my position there and it's got chart, charted detail and even with Navionics you can have images like this that people might have put in. 
ah, there's a drone shot of Kashtal Lukšić. So this is really helpful when you're out just checking out approaches or what things might look like, how deep a bay might be. Now, again, I'll go over this when I go over the app, everything with a grain of salt, okay? This, um, this app, the certain datum that it's based on may not mean that you travel into that bay and it's two meters deep. It may be eight meters deep, okay? So you've got to know what datums you're um, looking at and what year it has all been measuring to how deep it might actually be which is a nice little feature because so many people navigate solely off this uh, and I go into bays where I'm on my own even in a deep keel boat in a 60 footer because on Navionics it says you cannot go in there one of these I will show you right now is one I really know well people do this see this area here it says that it is less than one meter deep less than one meter deep there. Now I have anchored right there. All right, this is the sub pen on Viz, and if any of you have been on a trip with us or you've been there with us, you'll know that it's plenty deep. It's about, it says two meters on this chart, okay? It's about eight and a half meters right there. Uh, and then come up here further, it says it's less than one meter. Hmm, not quite right. I've anchored the 60 foot yacht right there. So everything with a grain of salt, you need to refer to your proper charts paper charts on board and understand where the tide and the datum level is so you can navigate safely in and out of places. Now in this case it says it's shallower than it is. Hopefully that's always the case. You don't want it to say it's deeper than it is and then go in and boom, okay? But always watch your depth, etc. So um, that's where we're at with Navionics and boating. Uh, I can show you courses just very briefly on this. You can do manual courses, automatic courses are required for, uh, I need to pay for my subscription, but you can see zero to one. This is just, then this is um, tracking how long my course is so far, 0.6 miles in the white square. I can go there, I can zoom right out. This is just so easy and intuitive. This is why we use it to, to plan courses or plan trips. And I might say I wanna go up through here and I put that one in the wrong place so I can click on it and drag it out. Tap another one in here and I want to go here. Can I go through this gap? Now I know that this gap here is a little bit shallow for some of my boats, so I'm going to go through this one, etc. And I might say I'm anchoring in here overnight. So 20.2 miles. Uh, if I hit start, it will then map how long I'm taking, uh, the total distance I've traveled, and it will give me, once I start moving, it will also give me a um, Oh, Kiha yeah, wants me to pay for it. It'll give me a, a time, estimated time of arrival as well. So really helpful. Um, if you want to see more about that, keep an eye out for the next video that I do on apps and I will go over Navionics for you so you can check it out and see if you want to invest in it for your trip or however. All right, that's basically it. That's what I use my smartphone for when we are out on the yacht. Uh, again, I must stress it's no substitution for navigating with your vision, with your depth, crew, sight out, ears, all that sort of stuff, and your VHF on. Remember, you must keep a proper lookout by all means possible at all times. That is a collision regulation that is a law. If you've got any questions about these apps, uh, if you want to learn more about one that I'm not going to do on a video on, which is basically at the moment WeatherTrack and Navionics uh, Boating, Boating HD, then just let me know. Thanks for watching. Uh, big huge thanks to our patrons that are for supporting the channel and looking forward to pushing you out more and more content. Keep an eye out because I will be doing a delivery. Uh, there is a Lagoon 42 brand new one I'm picking up from um, the coastal side of France and bringing it down through Gibraltar and up into Croatia. It's about a three week journey and we'll be doing live updates for patrons and etc. on that trip. So looking forward to sharing that all with you. Again, huge thanks to my supporters and we'll see you next time. All right, bye.